call the meeting to order. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. Anybody here for public comment? Nope, just for public comment. Okay, Mr. Gilberto, we'll start with the discussion on the town on land. Mr. Chairman, would it be possible to take up the appointment of the election workers? Is it that you have? Oh, I, I know the town clerk is here for that. Yes, yeah. we can do that. Yeah, I think it, I think it'll be quick. Should be. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, this is just for the annual election worker appointment uh, under Mass General Laws. The registrars meet every year um, and uh, recommend the names as forwarded to them by the two chairmen of the uh, town committees, the Republican and the Democratic town committees, and then uh, the unenrolled voters who just reach out to our office themselves. So the registrars did meet and uh, forward uh, on June 27th, and uh, the list that I believe you have received about 76, I believe, election workers uh, are up for uh, appointment or reappointment. And this is for the period of September 1 of this year through August 31st of 2018. So it just actually covers one election, which is the town election next, next year in May. So there are, under the law, there are three options as per my memo. Um, this board can take upon itself the uh, obligation of appointing election <coughs> workers for each position in each voting precinct or appoint election workers from the list submitted by the registrars as recommended by the registrars or vote to take no action at which time then the action reverts back to the registrars. In the past, the board has always chosen option two to just abide by the recommendation of the registrars and that's what I'm asking for you to do today. Any discussion? It's a good idea. <laughs> it's a good idea we need these people. Absolutely. Yes, They're doing a great job, everyone. Thankful for They them. do a <laughs> phenomenal job, and I have to, I praise them every chance I get because I can't tell you how dedicated they are, and they really rose to the challenges of the uh, early voting this year and the presidential election, um, and we had a new crew of tally clerks that came in after the presidential to count the write-ins, which this board voted uh, to uh, recommend those special election workers last October, and they stuck around, and they're on this list this year. So they're all doing a great job. They enjoy it, and they are very dedicated, and uh, I am lucky, and the town is lucky to have them. Thank you. Just Mr. a quick Maceri. question. Is the use of the... Uh, Popads. iPads for checking. Has that all been approved now for Not going forward? Not yet for elections. It is approved. It has been approved for early voting. That's why we first got them, right. and they can be used for town meeting. They are in the certification process for elections. So that hasn't been done? Not yet. We're, they will be um, tested at a couple of city elections this fall. So they have to go through an actual live election. And we're expecting to see certification of those probably around the first of the year. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll take a motion. Sure. Mr. Chairman, I move to exercise the following option for appointment of election workers for elections held between September 1, 2017 through August 31, 2018. That would be option two. Appoint election officers from a list submitted by the registrars as recommended by the registrars. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Schultz, second by Mr. O'Leary. Do I have any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thanks Thank for coming you in tonight. Thank you, Madam Town Clerk. Okay, we're going to hold off on the other two appointments, and we're going to go to the vote of sale town-owned land, and I'm going to turn it over 
the town administrator. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So we have two parcels that have been included on the agenda this evening. Um, unlike some of the other parcels where we often have had some uh, informal discussion before the board because the petitioner has been before us or submitted a letter, um, this uh, is com coming combined with uh, the letter uh, and the information at the same time. And the way the board's process has worked historically is that there's been a vote to initiate their, um, uh, the sale of the land uh, with uh, restrictions as deemed uh, appropriate by the board. And then there's a, a, a effectively uh, in a, an auction that takes place uh, relative to the parcel uh, where they're conveyed in that fashion by the town's um, special counsel uh, for uh, tax-related matters. Um, what I thought we'd do, because it may be more useful, is in addition to all of the information that is in the board's packet relative to both of these parcels, uh, that we would call the locations up on the uh, town's GIS system so the board can kind of interactively see the location and uh, maybe have a more dynamic conversation that's a little more effective from a time standpoint. That and I think we have representation from uh, both of the interested parties for the parcels here uh, this, this evening. So three, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest we start with uh, Devons Road, 8 Devons Road, town sure. parcel. I believe that was the first that we received in the first notice this evening. And I think that there's a hearing notice uh, in the packet as well. While Mr. Schultz is looking for the hearing notice, I just want to make sure everyone understands if you'd like to be recognized, please wait until I recognize you and I'll have you come up to the podium and give your street, your name and your street. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I believe you may have the hearing notice. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to read a public notice. Uh, the Board of Selectmen shall be considering for sale the following parcels of town-owned land on Monday, July 24, 2017 at 7.45 p.m. in room 14 of Town Hall, 235, Main, or 235 North Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Any parties interested in potential sale and subsequent private ownership of this parcel should plan on attending. The first parcel in question is mapped uh, 42, parcel 128. It's 5,000 square foot. The location is 8 Devons Road. The second parcel is mapped 26, parcel 77. 12,600 square foot, and it's 17R Francis Street. So uh, we, we received a request to purchase 8 Devons Road, and just for orientation purposes, this down here on the lower end is uh, um, Park Street. This is Oakdale. The first intersecting street is Devons Road. Devons Road has been accepted by town meeting on the westerly side over here. The easterly side is a dirt road not accepted by town meeting. The lot in question is lot number 128 with an address of 8 Devons Road. And uh, I believe that the interested party uh, is the owner of the property at lot 127, 6 Devons Road. And we received a letter from Mr. Anthony Saponaro relative to the property. Um, and perhaps it might be a good time for Mr. Saponaro to address the board. If he's here. Actually, I believe or it's his representative, representative re reference to the letter. I'm sorry, yeah, Ms. Botticelli. Right. Okay. Good evening. Anthony Sepinaro is my cousin, and he's handicapped. So he had an accident four years ago that broke every bone I don't know, on the right side of his body, so he doesn't walk too well. So he's asked me to represent him. I own Colonial Manor Realty in Reading, but I'm not here as a realtor but I'm just letting, I am disclosing that, that I am a realtor. Um, Anthony bought this, oh gosh, a lot of years ago, and he's tried. I have a letter I found in my file today from 2009 with him requesting um, to buy it. Nothing happened. He is the lot right beside it, to the right of it, and with the building of the high school, it's really, it's quite encroached on any privacy on that side. So he's just, he's not looking to build a house and he knows he can't. He just wants to assure privacy on that side because he's really lost it on the other side. Um, and that's all there is to say to it. There's, he's looking for it for privacy and for uh, not to build a house. And as you can see, his lot is quite small, 5,000. So this, is, this would only make it 10,000 altogether. So we're not combining it with 126. You're just combining it with 127? Right. Right. This house is on 127. Yeah. Yeah. But 
already on 126, right? Yeah, I, I don't know, Bobby. Does he own? Does he own the lot that's right next to the? Well, right next to it, but it's way down below the driveway going up. No, he's the lot. I know. I know he's at 127. He's the right. second one in from. Well, you actually, know where it is. It's down on the hole. As you drive it up right. the driveway, heading up to the middle school, high school, down on the hole. Yeah. Uh, right. I. You know what, Steve? I think that is him also. Okay. Those yep. two. And but you're right. It's not. It's. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. It's. Yeah. It's. It's not usable. Elevation. Right. right. So, I couldn't hear three that. together, what is that total? 15,000 square feet. I'm interested in that. The three together. 126 looks larger than. Yeah. 127. It does. I think it's 126. Can it's you small. click on 126 yep. and give us that? What's that? Yeah, Whoops. Yeah, it's it's this is all primarily wet. Yeah. yeah. So well, this 126 is, this is, is totally unusable. But this is the wetter of the. Yeah. But this is the one he's buying. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So it's <laughs> it is. It's 0.16 acres compared to 0.12 for the other two. Okay. Thank you. But that lot is, as Steve pointed out, it's not usable even Wet. for anything. Mm -hmm. It's a hole. Just kind of came with it. Okay. So this is the wetlands uh, highlighted here. You can see there right. are no wetlands in the immediate area there. Um, and then, um, well. No flood zone, right? Right. Okay. It still gets pretty wet there. I mean, it may not be delineated wetlands, but it's. Are they talking about this piece of property here? Yeah. Yes, I, I own this, and I own this. So you can raise your hand after she's done speaking. Okay. Well, um, um. Yes, Kate. I'm sorry. I just have a couple of questions because I'm for. confused about what I'm reading here. It says that land is for something to do with the septic system. So if we own it, how was that land designated for the septic of the next lot? And why would he be acquiring it if it doesn't seem like it's, it says it's predominantly wetlands delineated for the purpose of a septic system replacement on the abutting property. Um, I think what it was, if I, maybe I can help a little bit. So what exactly, let's just say it does, if whatever the terms and conditions are, if we're not putting it out to public op auction and we're selling it to this owner, what is he going to do with it? What, Hold what, on, what I'm going to ask the town administrator for a Stephen. So two, two things to be clear. The property will be conveyed at auction subject to any restrictions. So anybody who wants to offer to buy it could buy it if they're the highest bidder for the property. Right. Just to be clear, we're not negotiating with right. the individual. The board's asked to set the value, to set any restrictions in its action, and it doesn't often do that in its first review. So it wouldn't be unusual for the board to not make that determination this evening in the first review of this. The secondly, the, the memo that you received there from the conservation agent is a bit confusing. Yeah. But yes. what, what I understood, if I understand it correctly, what happened is there was a septic system constructed for the existing property at 6 Devons Road. And when they delineated wetlands in order to identify uh, the location, that was flagged. For whatever reason, it does not show in our GIS system as being wetlands. But there, to, to our knowledge, there is not a septic system constructed on this town owned land. It was purely identified when the septic system was delineated. I'm assuming the septic right, system is not. on 127 or 126. They're both in common ownership. Okay. It was the so he wisdom. owns both of those then? Yes. yes. Oh, These see. two properties. Okay. He, and he just his... put in a new system, the Board of Health, and he went through all the permitting and all that on 127. So the system's on 127 now? Yes. And so what, um, what would an individual, let's just say it goes to auction and a different owner buys this, what could be built on 5,000 square feet of what the Conservation Commission is identifying as wetland? So. The, the first thing to note is the building inspector made a, a note that grandfathering would need to be established for this. And that's important because the town owns the land. If the town were to seek to prove that the law was grandfathered, it would become a buildable lot. And the board historically has not wanted to convey properties for purposes of creating a buildable lot. So that's something that will need to be addressed in any action that, that is taken here to prohibit grandfathering from being established. Um, but to that end, any person could potentially acquire the property if they're willing to 
purchase it under the terms and conditions and prepared to pay the taxes associated with ownership. Uh, one thing to note, and it's not unusual, I think that there is a little bit of a, um, a friendly trespass situation where the part of the property is being used as a driveway on the side of this lot. Um, it, when I drove by to take a look at it, it wasn't significant, and as I said, it's not unusual for that to happen in this type of scenario. I think you parked a bunch of cars on it. Yeah, his house literally is on the line. That's how, that's how he bought it. It yeah. is truly on the line. So he either parks in the street or he parks on the dirt beside his house. It, it, just a quick question, too, yes. and, I'll, and I'll clarify. But uh, in the uh, building inspector's report to us, he says we have an application in the building department? Yeah, to apply to establish grandfathering. So if we wanted to apply to By establish that this was a grandfathered lot, the town would, would need to do so. And that would be for purposes of assuring that it's able to be Grandfather would need to be established. We have an application in the building department. That, that being said, CPC engineering and the fire department would need to review this. So, that, so that's if it were to occur. Yeah, there's a blank piece of paper we could fill out to seek to establish. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, somebody yeah. hasn't submitted one. Right, because yeah, we that's weren't seeking reading. development. Right, that's how it's oh. reading, yeah. All right, that's yeah. what's going to be my question. Yeah, and the other thing is, is uh, generally speaking, when the town acquires land, whether it be through the tax title, all the rest of it on the annual review, we send it around to all the town departments, you know, conservation did not necessarily express an interest in this, recognizing that it, an abutter in the area may need it for septic, so rather than taking it under their jurisdiction, it wasn't that critical. They didn't identify it as necessarily wanting it, knowing that at some point, to undo that would be take a, an act of the legislature. If uh, I could also interject, he is still having problems with his septic. Because of the construction that took place, it raised the water table for him. So even though he had a new system put in, he's still having problems. He may have to still move that septic because he didn't have the problem until the construction happened behind and beside him. And now it's, um, the septic people said it's just filling up from, you know, construction that was around it. So and he then may that still have to move it. His septic is filling up from what? Ground because water. the water table has water changed risen from yeah, construction. And it's not just the construction of the high school, it's construction that happened behind him, I believe, on Park Street. So it's made a difference in the water flow. I, I think it... Um, He's had several engineers over there. He spent about $40,000 just engineering. And they're all saying it's a stream or something is now well, there's a been culvert. deflected. Yeah, a brook has been deflected. There's also a brook. There's a culvert right. that, that right. runs from Gill's property heading back into that direction yeah. uh, along the driveway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember onto I was looking at it when we were yeah. conveying that. Gills property. Uh, but I also know that there, there are other abutters in the area that have expressed interest in some of these parcels, and I believe the McCormicks. Um, they've petitioned us previously, too, uh, on some of the parcels. I don't know if this one was specific. It may have been a few years back, and we opted not to sell it at that particular time. But Yes, Ms. Minupelli. Just one, if you know, who owns, it looks like nothing's on it, on 135, either do we own that as well? No, I believe that's owned by the individual who's yeah. McCormick's. Here. Yes. Oh, and there's remember. nothing on that, right? Well, hold on. Do you no. want, oh, sorry. She wanted to be recognized as sorry. the board, I think this is probably. One quick question. Yes. Uh, what is the applicant's thoughts on a deed restriction of making 128 not grandfathered and ergo not buildable? Oh, absolutely fine. He's not looking to build anything on it. And that restriction would run in perpetuity with the land. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone, um, anyone else in the public like to be heard? If you could go to the podium and just state your name and your address, please. My name is Jackie McCormick, and I live at. 195 Park Street. And currently, I own the lot. Um, well, can I move? Yeah, 135, which is the big one. I haven't got, I no, got my glasses. I own this one. It was here yep. and here. And I own this one. I don't do computers. It's okay. Do you own both lots right now? Oh, okay. Yes, I own that. Mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. and I want 
this. This is where I live. And I own this one. And my son owns this. So. What's the script? I want to add it on to keep it low. Really. You said you own this parcel. And is there another one? Your the son Joe owns one in Oakdale. There's a little piece right there. You see it? The second lot of Oakdale, her son owns. What number is that? Would be 130, 130, I believe. Is that the land lot? Is there, yeah, there's access off of Park Street to the 132, right? That's where she lives. That's where they live. That's their private residence. Okay. And 134 and 135 is vacant land? Yeah. Which they own. The last parcel is this little one here? And that's all. Yeah, both yeah. Right? My Presumably. son, oh, Joe, owns this one over here also. So that and... Okay. So if you saw that all of the lots highlighted, there are yep. some family owners. Okay. So what's on 135 now? What? What's on that lot there? Uh, on the biggest lot? Uh, the 135, the funny shaped lot, there's, there's nothing on there now. There, there's no buildings on those other back lots on, of yours. On, on 135? Right. No, there's no buildings. And nothing on 134. And nothing on 134. Correct, yeah. Seems to be all hospital. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Are you interested in the property as well? The one that we're thinking about selling. I'm sorry, I'm having terrible time hearing. So you also have an interest in the property. Are you interested in purchasing this town-owned land as well? Yes, I'd like to add it to, to here. Yeah. So she wishes to add that lot to this kind of. Right. Can you click on 135, Mr. Gilbert? What's the acreage there? Nope, you're fine. 0.71 acres. Yeah. You, have you got this one in? Because I own that one too. Mm -hmm. And this one that's another yeah. owned is 0.17 acres. Yes, Mrs. Minupelli. It seems like it really only There's would be, no only there. people that have bought it would have any interest in it anyway. And this These two Unless someone were trying to, try. to, to claim that it was grandfathered on a way before 1945 and this 50 footage is, you know, front of other. Street. On the other side, right? You mean? But we yeah. currently own it, and we wouldn't yeah. be petitioning for that. And I, if we were to sell it, my guess is the majority of the board here would put restrictions on it, whereby it would be combined with, and you know, wouldn't be used for a buildable purpose. Maybe for, a, you know, a shed or a garage or something, but not right. a primary residence. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Right. So we wouldn't agree. We would make sure that the stipulation would be that the deed restriction. In, right, including it in with an existing piece of land doesn't give it a. The ability for the existing land to become a buildable lot or a multiple lot. Okay. Okay. Any other input from the residents? So we know we have some interest, and the board has to make a decision if we want to put it out for bid and, and what the conditions will be on that. So, do uh, we have any more public? Anybody else from the public before I close the public hearing? Just this lot. Lot. Just on, on this one. Just on this lot. It, it, it just is important to note that the board sometimes may not sell it, may decide not to sell it to the highest bidder if they deem it's in the public's interest to sell it to a director butter. Yep. For other purposes like future septic si system expansion and stuff like that. Yep. Mrs. Menupelli. I just have one more thing. As you have, m Mr. Gilberto was flipping between. Um, the first parcel and Mrs. McCormick's parcels. It this looks like the valuation of. This is ours that he's on now. Can you flip it back to uh, 135 and then 134? 
3,400. Right, and, and then yeah. what's 134, Mr. Gilberto? 2,900. So why, how does our parcel? 40,000. My guess, and I'm just guessing, this may be some sort of an exemption because it was used for horse corrals, agriculture and farming, potentially. Oh. As opposed to that one just being a 5,000 square foot lot with the potential to be built, and therefore it's worth. Can you, just to humble me, if you could click on the parcel to the right, 127. Nope, next yeah, one. Uh, next yeah. one, sorry, that one. 120. So, okay, and then, then what's the one to the right of it? Right, 2,600, 2,800. 2, okay. Okay. Even though it's sold for 177. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing if we don't have anyone else from the public. Okay. we we'll close the public hearing. Board members, do you have anything else you want to discuss on this matter? Do we want to go ahead and bring it up at another meeting and determine the terms and conditions or just something that we can work on tonight? Or we need a little more time to think about it? Well, yeah, the, the options for the... Um or uh, motions. Yeah, I'm going to read the potential restrictions. Uh, Just the ones that uh, be pertinent to the. Yeah. Number one would be not to be used in and of itself as a separate building lot. Uh, number two, the premises shall not be used to satisfy minimum zoning or health code requirements for the construction or use of any building or adjoining land. Three, no building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless the premises is combined with adjoining and said adjoining land already meets minimum requirements. Uh, four, no building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises. Five, to waive the provisions of uh, MGL Chapter 40A, Section 6, pursuant to its ninth paragraph. And that's grandfathering. Yeah. I, do we all agree that it wouldn't be used as a separate bill of a lot, is it? Well, I think in the past we've, if I recall, we did one, two, and three, right? And I don't think we did four and five. On ever since I've been on the board. Yeah, when just in reviewing the property at eight acres Boulevard, it appears that that was the case, and that that was the most recent town owned land to be sold at auction by virtue of a request from an abutting property owner. So we put this out for bid. Is the evaluation price that's up here on um, go out? Is that what the bid price is? Or we set the bid price? You set the minimum bid price. We set the minimum you bid. Do. So if you don't see it, receive any bid at the minimum, then the auction is uh, just closed and disqualified and no award is made. Mr. O'Leary, refresh my memory. How did we set the minimum bid going in the past? For parcels such as this that we're anticipating to have it conjoined with adjacent properties is to get it back in the tax rolls is basically to cover the cost of conveyance and any legal fees. I can't you know, the, our policy has finally changed. Uh, Rather than you know go with forty thousand dollars and it isn't really worth forty thousand okay. dollars to somebody, but Agreed. we decided it was best to get it back on the tax rolls and into somebody else's hands for maintenance and upkeep and, and all the rest and public health purposes. Uh, we just want to cover our costs to get it back on the tax rolls, yeah. and generally that's been at least twelve hundred dollars. Um, yeah. We just have to check with council to see what the conveyance cost would be. And I think Mrs. McCormick's having a hard time hearing us. Yeah. Right, Mrs. McCormick, you're having a hard time hearing us. Yes, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'll try to repeat what we said so you hear clearly. If we put this out for bid, most likely it will be just for the charge that it costs us to close on the property. So it will be in the thousands of dollars range. It's not, not too much. I mean, somewhere between, I don't want to give an exact number, but probably in the high end, 3000 2000, 2000 Yeah, a couple thousand bucks. Okay. So... Mrs. Minupelli? But that's that's the starting bid. So depending on who wants it more right. at an auction, and it, you know who it's going to be more value to is going to bid more for it. Because it looks like Mr. Sapanara is already on it from that GIS picture. And I don't know if those lines are accurate, but. I, we believe so. Yeah. You could see the. The driveway. You can see the house. Okay. Like so does the board need more time to deliberate on this issue? Do we? Can we take action tonight? Do we even want more time? I know in the past we've always brought it up at one meeting, deliberated, deliberated on it, and then 
brought it up at the next, which I would suggest we do in this case, just to make sure we have everything. But if the majority of the board feels like we're ready, I would be fine with it. Anybody have any, Steve? Have no, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the putting it out for bid and with the, with the restrictions on it. Um, but if you want to uh, consult with council to see which <laughs> ones best suit this based upon what we believe you know, meets the needs, uh, we can bring it up at our August meeting and I would feel more comfortable with Mr. Mr. Gilbert. Just a, a question through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the representative here on behalf of the owner on Devon's Road, you mentioned that there was uh, an issue relative to the septic system. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the owner intends to consider using this town-owned land for purposes of a septic treatment field? <coughs> Only if he keeps running into problems. He, that's been suggested to him by the engineers that so I only note that because I think it would play into whether or not we include restriction number two, which restricts the use, uh, the use of the property for the uh, meeting construction or building uh, codes. So I just note that for us to, con that's another thing for us to consider, that's all. And, and I think the system that was constructed may actually have a tight tank already on the facility, if I'm not mistaken. It does, but the tight tank, like I said, something. Okay, so maybe I misunderstood number two, but I thought we, so we are saying, Mr. Gilberto, if we agree one of the conditions to put number two on there, which is the premises shall not be used to satisfy minimum zoning or health code requirements, you're saying it can't be used for the septic system? Right, so we would not put that restriction on. Okay, so right now we're looking at item one, which is not to be used in in or itself as a separate building lot you know just speaking out loud so we'd probably be in agreement with that one in number three right. which would be no building or other structures of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises right. no that's four no it, number, number three is a little less restrictive no building or other structure of any kind shall be erected or maintained on the premises unless the premises is combined with the adjoining instead of adjoining land already meets the minimum requirements of the town for a separate building. In other words, you can't yep. build a, a new home on You can put a garage right. or a shed. You can shed put a garage on. or a shed. Okay. So it's one and three mm -hmm. and nothing else. Right. Okay. Can, so someone, if we, can yeah. someone just clarify, is, is there a septic system already on the town land? No. No, there is not. Because I'm... What it, what was that whole discussion about it? Intent, I, don't, I don't understand that. So I'll, Mr. I'll have my interpretation of the, the issues based on the limited knowledge I have that there is a recently constructed tight tank for this house on this land, oh, which is good. in common ownership. Okay. Yes. However, okay. they're being advised that because the property may be low lying and maybe being infiltrated by uh, water in this area that it might be better to construct it on this side of the house further I away from the wetland. Like, that's how I understand okay. the explanation. Right. Okay. And not do a tight tank, but do a leaching field. Oh, it may still be a tight it tank. It may it's still be a tight tank. tank. It's just the water table may be a little bit lower there and not lifting okay. it. Okay. I think that, you know, understanding that is important because, you, well, if it's combined here and there's already a house built on this property, if it's combined here, there isn't a house common presently built on this property. Now, this land may already be developable. I don't know. Uh, but it's something we, I think, need to be aware of based on the interest. Uh, only so that there isn't an outcome that was unexpected in the whole thing. Okay. And also the outcome of not being able to build it there because it's wetlands, too, already. Right? Yeah, the, the wetland thing is not entirely clear to me, to be honest with the board, because okay. we don't show it as delineated as wetlands, yet right. it was delineated as wetlands. Yeah, and I can tell you, you know, in the springtime, it's pretty wet down around that hole. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll have some town council look at this. We'll come up with a bid price, make sure the council knows that the choices are right now one and three. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're considering. And then at our August 21st meeting, we'll make a final decision. And 
we'll have the bid packages out after that out and prepared and then whoever would like to bid on it can go ahead and bid on it. Okay. Any other? We're going to pass over this. But we're not going to right. We're yeah, not going to take it up as a motion. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, if if, uh, if you have it already, and maybe I didn't hear it, uh, I would move to continue the public hearing until August 21st. Do I have a second? Oh, second. A second. A second. second. Got a motion and a second. Yeah, I would first suggest a time certain, perhaps 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. on uh, August, August 21st. 21st. Okay. So we're going to extend the public hearing to. It'll be later. It'll, It'll be, be after, after that. It'll time. be after that. After It'll that. be. It will be advertised. We're going to bring it up again, on the meeting on August twenty-first, where we'll make a final de decision on how the bid package will go out. You'll have all the particulars on that at that meeting. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Yo, well, thank you for coming in this evening. Next one is Map 26, Parcel 77, 17R Francis Street. Do we have a public hearing notice for that? Or was I think there was a same it was combined it was notice. Same. It was right in the same. record. Yep. Okay. So the request that the board received was relative to 17R Francis Street, which thank is you. highlighted here in yellow. It is a property that is owned by the town, valued at $45,100. It's 0.29 acres. Uh, just to give you an idea of the surroundings, uh, there is land owned by uh, another uh, property owner that abuts it on two sides. You can see it noted here on the southerly and easterly sides. On the westerly side, it's abutted by... Excuse me, is that one for sale right now? The one off of Wren Circle? You know? Uh, no, it's sold. It did sell? He's in the middle of my house now. Okay. Yeah. There's a ownership, it appears to be in a, a, a single family home on, to, on the uh, south, uh, excuse me, the, the westerly side of the property. And then on the northerly side, um, the, and I believe, sir, you're the uh, petitioner, Mr. Herrick, is that right? Um, has frontage on Francis Street now and is seeking to acquire this property, which has resulted in the notice and the hearing this evening. What, can you click on the one we're discussing tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's it there. And again, just for... What's your nine? What's the acreage the on the parcel of the current house? So, so we've been point seven one acres. And this we'll parcel is 0.29 acre. acres. So what's 94? 94. Is that ours? No, it is not. It's owned by uh, the property owner at 21. Francis, which appears to be this lot here. And it looks like there are some items on the property. I'm not sure whose items are on it. You can see it's kind of brown in the middle there, as if there might be some things located on it, but you know that I don't know. And this property over here, also owned by the individual. Well, this is interesting. Is there a house on this lot, this highlighted lot, sir? No, it's no. a, a business. Okay. I don't hold that And that's a house there, right? Michael, could you just zoom out for a second to give us an idea of what part of town this is? Sure, it's off of Main Street. It, it's it's kind be, of behind, behind Greenbrier. Up behind okay. Greenbrier. Oh, okay. Francis right. Street. Oh, yeah, Palmer yeah. Road, Francis Street. Right where it is. Yep. It's right at the corner, Palm Road, Francis Street. Thank you. I'll turn off the wetlands. Sorry so, did you say behind O'Keefe's is what? Behind Betty? Murphy, I've been here. two lots. Right. And there's Sun Paul that bought that, that weird shape box and drop on three run circle. Oh, okay. That one. Okay. And then the back lot of Betty's is not developed? No. How do they access that property? Down that right away, right there, you arrows. Hmm. That's privately owned though, right? Correct. Yes. By the owner, the property owner at this location. Oh, no, I take that back. Nope. No, that's the, the one that they just circle? purchased, yeah. that her son just purchased. It is Rent Circle. I'm, I apologize. Do we know what the topography of 77 is? Is it flat? Uh, half is flat and it goes down. 
flat park closer to your home? Yeah. So lot 74 up there, was map, whatever that is, 74. Again, is, you're saying that's, that's industrial, commercial industrial? Behind Betty's uh, you, you say, what, what's the Bay State? No, uh, I mean, okay, 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 right, okay, yeah, keep landscaping. That's that's Northridge. That's changed recently. Changed in what respect? Not the configuration. The Went back to Maximus Marino, and Betty gave Paul a few feet to make that a limited width, a limited frontage lot. Basically, a pork chop lot. Yeah. He needed 50 feet. He only had 40 where it chokes down. Okay. And that was all approved through the Planning Commission, I assume? Okay, so it made it a non-conforming lot, pork chop lot. Yeah. Well, and then the access from Red Circle was eliminated. Yeah, it's given back to them right now. Yeah. So it's minimum frontage and then a long, narrow driveway. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, if Mr. Herrick could just come up and tell us what his interest Please. is. In Thank you. Chris Herrick, 19 Francis Street. Uh, for over 40 years, my family and I have been using and maintaining that lot. There was an old house there before the guy died. Um, I had no family left into the town. Several years ago, I removed that house because it caved in. Uh, it was kind of dangerous. I now have kids. And my septic system was on this property, my old septic system. But I've since built a new house. I tore down the old one, built a new one. I wanted to buy it several years ago to put a new septic system, but I, I put it somewhere else. Um, I'd like to expand my backyard to put a pool in for the family and to plant a, a wall of evergreens to shield out those businesses. As he came in, and he cut all the trees down uh, surrounding my house. It was all all trees right there and cut them all down. There was even some, some going up the side there. As the actually these trees have pushed his road. It's a little private road right up next to my property. <coughs> so it, it's landlocked. I don't intend to build. I just want to uh, adjoin it to mine, make it a full acre. So you, would you, you wouldn't be opposed to conjoining it with your lot? And That's what it, I want to do. Make it continuous? Yeah. I want to expand my backyard and add more privacy. And, and pull up part of the, the old septic system. It's like an old pit. It's full of mud. Okay. So there is commercial property back there. No. Well, it appears it's property being used for some commercial purpose. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. I don't want to represent one way or the it's other. It's residential. It is residential, okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. O'Keefe owns, Betty O'Keefe, Honora O'Keefe owns both of them. I don't know why it's not conjoined. I think she's got one of her sons on the back lot. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, because the only reason I was asking if was our lot zoned commercial, industrial? No, nor, well. is that, nor is that one. No, it's that one. Okay. This, this seems like the one that we just looked at where it's, you know, a butters would be. Yeah. A number of a butters actually might be interested in bidding for it. So as you can see, the highway business zone is nearby. This area here is residence A. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Again, Mr. Chairman, I'd be interested in, in offering this one up for sale, too, and, and with restrictions one and three. <clears throat> Again, so that, you know, if he wants to put a pool in or wants to put a shed up or mm -hmm. a garage or, or replace a septic later on, he'll have the uh, 
the ability to do so. I agree. Any other board members have anything else to say? I agree with both of you guys. No, it makes sense. So what we'll do is we'll send this over to our town council with our recommended restrictions, and then our August 21st meeting will continue this hearing and make some final decisions and get the bid packages ready to go. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to continue this public hearing until the August 21st, 2017 meeting. Second. At 805. At 805. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go backwards a little bit and grab the minutes. Mr. Clerk. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the June 19, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. And a motion to second. Any discussion on them? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next up, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the June 19, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is. July 6th. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the July 6, 2017 regular session minutes as written. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? You were at the sixth. Yeah. 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 Just three of us. Right? It was just three of us yeah. at that meeting. Right. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm abstaining. And two abstentions. Okay. <coughs> Since we're being pretty flexible about moving things around on the schedule, did we have something we need to address at FinCom tonight that we're holding you up on? We need to hear the discussion on the uh, on the other board. Okay. We can go to that subject next, if uh, out of respect, so you don't have to spend the, your whole evening here. Sure. That's happy okay. to give you an update, uh, Mr. Chairman. As you're aware, uh, Mr. Masseri, myself, along with the town administrator, and uh, Mark Clark and Andrew Lafferty, and our consultants from uh, Wright Pierce have been engaging in conversation with the town of Andover uh, in regard to uh, their approaching us. First of all, they're in response to their um, response to the DEIR, the MWRA uh, project in our water uh, proposal, whereby they uh, responded, in essence, saying that they could provide us the necessary water and would be willing to supply us the necessary water, which uh, precipitated um, our engaging in some conversation with them. Um, over the last couple of months, we've met uh, numerous times uh, to uh, vet with them uh, different types of proposals that they may be willing to offer the town of North Reading in way, by way of uh, produ producing and uh, providing the necessary water that we've been looking for. Uh, they've been made aware that it's uh, in the very late stages in relation to our MWRA progress that we've made since uh, we have already uh, been to town meeting several times, uh, appropriated the money uh, necessary to effectuate the uh, construction in um, Reading, which would be necessary to provide the MWRA water as well as uh, construction of a uh, pumping station here in North Reading in order to facilitate that project. Uh, it is, you know, obviously late uh, in, the, in the process. However, that being said, based upon the conversations, which I consider to have been uh, interesting, rather fruitful, and uh, something that we should uh, potentially uh, consider looking at, uh, but to date, uh, the Board of Selectmen in Andover has not uh, publicly uh, vetted the business terms and conditions that they've uh, discussed with us. Uh, they intend on doing that at their next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, we informed them today that you know once they do that, then this board would have something to react to, uh, and we would be happy to consider that. And I would uh, suggest that we put on our August 21st agenda, uh, an agenda item specifically for uh, consideration of Andover's proposal to us, uh, which will be again vetted publicly up in Andover, and accept I would expect some sort of an offer 
uh, parameters, business uh, terms and conditions and parameters uh, that they'll be looking to discuss with us on the fast track. It's important for everybody to note that you know, it is our intention at this point, it was still running in tandem, uh, full steam ahead with the NWRA. It would be our intention to, again, let some contracts or look for contracts to be let to start effectuating the construction projects in Reading. Uh, should we decide that it's in the town's best interest to seriously consider uh, a proposal from Andover that may very well delay our timeline in relation to letting the contracts and the permitting process? Uh, we have informed them that we're not looking to delay the process unnecessarily uh, and that and they're asking us to take a look at this. Uh, it would affect our timeline, not only for the construction of the project, but also in relation to our intermunicipal agreement with Andover, which expires on June 30th, uh, 2019, which was the date that we imposed on ourselves as far as signing up with the MDRA and turning off one spigot and turning on another. Uh, in response to that, they've offered a, uh, they will be offering, I, I believe, a two-year extension on the intermunicipal agreement to provide us the necessary time to appropriately review their proposal. The terms and conditions that we've discussed informally with them would be more favorable uh, from a dollars and cents standpoint than we currently enjoy with them. And uh, we would expect that at the August meeting we will have uh, the details of that um, Again, once that's vetted with them publicly um, uh, for our board's consideration. So uh, the discussion has been very fruitful, uh, very uh, straightforward. Uh, it appears as though they do have the ability to meet our supply demands. Uh, it's going to require some permitting, as will the MWRA. It doesn't appear that the permitting process and review process would be any more cumbersome than what we'll be going through with the MWRA. Uh, but as far as the specifics of it, the Andover Board has not publicly offered anything as of yet. Uh, they have committed today to uh, do it publicly at their next meeting, which is a week before ours in August. And uh, we'll be bringing forward that for our consideration. But just for the Board's information again, it's important to note that time is of the essence if we're going to move forward in the timeline with the MWRA. Andover recognizes that if they offer the uh, two-year extension, we may still opt to go MWRA, and the terms and conditions of the intermunicipal agreement that would be extended would not change. Um, so in consideration of just providing them the opportunity to make a presentation to us. Um, we also need to be aware that if we decide to push the pause button on the MWRA, you know, we run the risk of missing a construction season, which could potentially add additional costs if we decide to continue on that route, uh, it will delay the permitting process. And uh, we potentially would need some sort of additional appropriation, probably at the October town meeting, for engineering and design and review of the Endover system just to uh, confirm that they would be able to deliver as they said they can. Uh, we have no reason to believe that they can't, by the way. But I think they've made a, a good faith effort to. Uh, to get our attention, and uh, after their August meeting, we'll see if they do have our attention. Uh, any questions at this point? Uh, Bob, uh, fill in. I think what Steve has said is, is pretty clear. I, I just make note that having sat through the negotiations with them on the current contract and how we ended up where we are, there's much different tone and, you know, clearly uh, they're going all out to work with us to come up with something that might make sense and be a benefit to both them, clearly, and the town of North Reading. So uh, my recommendation is to continue on this path. Uh, we urge them to go public and you know, we'll be able to observe what feedback they get and get an understanding of what issues they may run into that they haven't anticipated from their own public and uh, get to a point where, you know, uh, at the last meeting uh, we had, 
uh, I had asked that we continue on the path and that we be prepared to put together uh, pros and cons and uh, provide all the information so that we can look at it completely on both sides and make some decision. So uh, we're going to do that potentially this week. And uh, I think as a meeting that the Michael had with Steve and the discussion, it became clear that maybe we need to get them to do a few things in advance of this, and they've agreed to it. So looking forward to see what occurs at their meeting. And uh, their meeting is like ours, broadcast, and if you miss it, usually a day later it shows up okay. on the uh, Andover uh, TV. Well, I appreciate the time that you, Mr. Masseri and Mr. O'Leary, put into this. I know you've given a lot of hours. Um, it is very frustrating. Uh, as you know, Mr. Masseri, you and I, Probably back early 2014, we sat across the table from them on this particular subject and we kind of got the Heisman and clearly got the letter that followed up later on a few months later saying that they cannot offer us the gallonage we were looking for and the terms and conditions we were looking for. And so what I'm going to need, though, in addition to everything else that you talked about, is I am going to need some clear understanding of why now they can and why then they couldn't. It just has to be understandable because for us to make... If this board is going to make a decision to change our direction, well, we have to know that we're actually voting on something that's that's real. Because all I have right now officially is that they cannot provide and meet our demands for the future of this town. And we don't want to make this decision twice. And we don't want to leave it for anybody that's sitting in these seats years from now. And we have to make it. We've already. I felt we've already made a r the right decision. We're going down the right path. And it's great to hear that they could come back to the table and actually do this, but it, there has to be some explanation. We, we just owe that. We, we have asked them, Mr. Chair, we have asked them for uh, a direct explanation as to what's changed over the last three to Thank four you. years. And uh, they, they will respond uh, in kind. Thank you. A, a few comments on it. I think I agree with a lot of things everybody's saying here. My concern is if we kick this down the road, construction's only gonna cost more year over year as we wait if we end up, whatever attack we take. Because you're gonna have costs if you expand with Andover, you're gonna have costs if you go to MWRA. And the construction costs never get cheaper year over year. Uh, I think it's imperative though that de at their next, I believe their next select meeting, Steve, is like right before ours? It's a week before, it should be the uh, 14th. They really gotta take this up at their next meeting. Because they, they have committed to doing it. We can't wait any longer. We have to fish or cut bait. And we've, we bought a house on Mill Street. We've gone to the voters. How many times at town meeting appropriating money? Probably two or three times. Correct. We we got to move forward, and I'm more worried about. I just don't want our grandkids or their their grandkids have to deal with this issue. We we want to end this issue once and for all. I think it's important. Yeah. yeah one thing is very clear is that we're talking to a totally different group of people yeah. than we were five years ago. New town administrator, who obviously clearly has spent a lot of time dealing with this issue, and. Uh, a lot of the information they've provided is, uh, with respect to their ability to provide the water is coming from the consultant and the company that uh, examined and came up with their new water rate structure. And I feel a lot more comfortable listening to his responses to the questions associated with that. So they are going to respond to that. And they are going to discuss it publicly. And we'll see where it goes. Thank you. I still view my job and Steve's job is to collect information that is clear and defensible that the board can look at and make a decision one way or the other. I agree. Agreed. Yep. I'm not coming saying we, we got to go with Andover. I'm just saying let's look at all the information. We would do yeah, there's everything. been a change and and. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, we started with MWRA based on what they said, and uh, but things have changed, and I think based on uh, the potential cost issues, I think we need to look at it and make a decision based on all the information that we have. And that's what why we've had so many meetings and what we plan on well, I look forward discussing to the, at our next to the meeting. Next meeting. Thank you. Can comment. You have any questions or anything you'd like to ask us on um, this subject? Yeah, I have one question. Um, if 
just speak into the mic if you I hate to do it but just for the folks at home can hear you if you were to go with Andover uh, would you continue to draw water from the Ipswich and if you were to continue to draw water from the Ipswich could this ultimately down the road become a liability in other words what happens if it dries up so whatever decision we make as a board will not include drawing water from the Ipswich River, or at okay. least one that I will vote on. I don't know. That's yeah, no, I, I believe that the intention is, that obviously we have to make some, if we're going to maintain our current water system in tandem with something else, we're talking about million to, millions of dollars worth of expenditures in order to do that. Um, you know, so I don't believe it is our intention to necessarily maintain our wells in a uh, fashion which would allow us to continue to draw. Uh, so and which would make the Ipswich River Watershed Association happy. But it depends right. upon the permitting process as to whether or not they want us to have some sort of a backup system available. If that's the case, we'll, we'll have to deal with that when it comes to it. But our intention right now is not to make any capital improvements, major capital improvements to our current water system. So in, essentially, in you, <coughs> your intention would be to have Andover supply all of the water needs of North Rack. Correct, 100%. Right. Yep. Right. A or B? Yep. It's either going to be Andover or it's going to be the MWRA. 100%. Uh, yeah. Both on either either option. But anything else? No. Thank you. Okay. Getting back on track on the agenda. No one else has anything else in that? I mean, I yes. that that I, I think we're already on a path that we, we've, all, we've recognized, we've, we've already projected the cost factor of joining the MWRA. We've go already gone forward. We're already into permitting. We are all, we've already made a decision on it. And I think looking back at all the data and the documentation and all the presentations, that was a big issue back in 2012, 2013, you know, the cost factor of m making sure we upgrade and, you know, take care of our wells and things like that. So now we'd be going one-third our water, two-thirds Andover to fully be beholden to Andover for our complete water supply. And that's a major concern that I have. And I was interested in your continuation of the talks for redundancy purposes and certainly being a good neighbor. And, you know, we certainly provide a lot of mutual aid to our neighboring communities and the importance of that factor in the sewer component of this. But um, I mean, I think 2013, I joined the board in 2014, and that agreement had been in negotiations for two years. So it's now we're going on several years where everyone's been aware that we're going to MWRA. And I'm not sure why we don't already have all of this data and documentation and information. And we're, we're prolonging what we're doing because we're expecting to get it now in, in August. I don't think we should prolong anything. I think we should continue on our path. I think it's important to note that uh, Mr. Masseri and myself made it quite clear to the Andover representatives that uh, this board and community are quite content in relation to where we stand right now and the path that we're on. You know, they certainly have, uh, basically what we conveyed was, you know, if they're looking for us to consider another viable option. They need to get something on the table to us rather quickly, uh, which would be eyebrow raising and something that we feel as though we would have a fiduciary responsibility to really to vet and look at. Uh, I believe that's what they're going to be doing uh, post haste. Uh, but they, they don't understand that we're on a, a very short timeline. Um, our consultants are waiting for this board to make a final decision. We, we have a decision. They're still moving forward. They have certain aspects that they can continue to work on. But in, short, in a short period of time, they need to know, we go on MWRA or we go on Andover. Uh, it doesn't it necessarily adversely impact the permitting process as far as the state is concerned, other than what are you doing? Um, but for our ability to get the permits in place, to effectuate the plan that we want to effectuate, and the timing of any construction, particularly MWRA-wise, um, is critical. And Andover recognizes that. Uh, they're very serious about it. Uh, they've worked very hard to um, uh, throw some ideas across the table to us, uh, and we've been somewhat receptive to that, uh, guiding them a bit as to what we believe would uh, 
potentially put it in the category where the board, you know, we could seriously consider taking a, a look at it. Uh, and they have now committed to bringing it up at their April 14th meeting uh, formally, publicly, and then uh, forwarding it to us for our consideration at our 21st meeting. And so again, we appreciate their effort that they put in. Again, all the meetings we've been to, they've been there too. And uh, they know that it's the 11th hour and uh, they know that they're asking a lot of us and they appreciate that and they will give us an explanation as to what's changed and what they're offering. So, thank you. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go back and uh, go back to the appointments and reappointments. And the MAPC representatives, well, I, think they, I believe we have two appointments we to do. make for that one. Excuse me, just as a yeah. follow-up on this, in relation to the MWRA, we also have a meeting this week with Andover, oh, excuse me, with, uh, with Reading, yeah. to continue that process moving forward as far as the river crossing and other issues uh, that we're facing down there. So th this was supposed to be an update on MWRA and uh, Andover, but they were more interested in Andover at this point. Yeah. Uh, but the MWRA process continues. Uh, the discussions with uh, Reading continues, and there's another meeting Wednesday afternoon. Is the, the bridge crossing the infrastructure, when do you think that'll get worked out? Is that? We will have to go before, we have to deal with some local committees down there, such as the Conservation Commission and uh, Historic Commission down there, because there's some historical structures with the bridge abutments there. Um, so depending upon, we're going to have to deal with both of them anyway. And again, in relation to the conservation, it's going to require some sort of uh, passing through conservation. It's going to take an act of the legislature uh, to get approval for that. Uh, but Reddick's on board with it. They'll have a town meeting to address it. We'll have one to address it for special legislation uh, should we decide to go that route. Uh, and we're working on some sort of a schedule with Reading as far as getting before the historic district to address their concerns and uh, make some proposals as to the three different paths we can take and why one or two might be more advantageous than another. Thank you. Anything else? We're good? Okay. Appointments? Mr. Schultz, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint Hi, Mrs. Danielle McKnight as a representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Wait. Council for a term to expire July 24, 2020. I have a motion or I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Being None being heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None? Unanimous. Next appointment for the MAPC. Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint the esteemed Michael P. Gilberto as an alternate representative to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council for a term to expire July 24, 2020. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any more discussion? A willing volunteer? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Unanimous. I'm looking at Unanimous. Oh. Taxation Aid Committee. Yep, one more here. Can find it. This is the appointment of the board liaison. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, appoint Selectman Robert Mosseri as liaison uh, to the Taxation Aid Committee for a term to expire May 8, 2018. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? None being heard. All those in favor? That was on the list before, <laughs> yeah. so. Aye. 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 Yeah. Unanimous. Okay. I look forward to getting some aid from you next while. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. Any, any effort you can make. Is, especially when the water bills. That's right. Age, Steve. <laughs> when the water bills come around, it'll be very helpful. Uh, ratification, collective, I'm sorry, ratify the collective bargaining agreement with DPW Local 125. Uh, Mr. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gilberto, do you want to? I'll give a very brief summary. This, this is a collective bargaining agreement between the town and DPW Teamsters Local 25, which represents our DPW employees. It be an agreement that covers uh, a period of time including uh, fiscal years 2016 and 2017. So that is a period of time that just uh, expired on June 30th of 2017, and we are scheduling negotiations for a successor agreement beyond that should this be ratified by the town. Um, it has been ratified by the union. The agreement uh, is within the existing uh, overall strategy relative to uh, wage adjustments. It's a 1% wage adjustment for fiscal year 2016, 1% wage increase for fiscal year 2017, and a half percentage point increase uh, effective at the very end of fiscal year 2017. And the major components intended to modernize the operations of the departments and an agreement reached willingly with our employees uh, would update some of the equipment and uh, uh, clothing uh, reimbursement 
uh, and uniform programs in the town to a more uh, modern um, uh, apparel. Uh, we'll make some changes to the compensation relative to uh, some other benefits that are earned during uh, work performed outside of the regular work schedule and probably most significantly would modernize the department's uh, drug and alcohol testing policy um, to be uh, more broad. Again, reached an agreement with the members of our unions and I want to thank the union representation for its uh, being at the table to uh, obtain these um, these amendments subject to the ratification of the board. Again, as I mentioned, the union ratified this agreement two weeks ago and it's pending before the board for a vote tonight. Any other questions? I'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify and sign the memorandum of agreement between the Town of North Reading and DPW Local 25 for the period of July 1, 2015 through June 30, 2017. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? I just want to say before we vote, I want to thank the Local 25 representative and the, the local union representatives. Uh, they were very respectful and professional and worked really hard to get this wrapped up. And we did it in one day. And I want to thank them for their time and I uh, look forward to continuing pretty quickly here in about a month or so to continue the next three-year contract and get that cleared up and kind of get that all put to, put to rest and really move forward. I want to thank them for their patience. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None? Unanimous. Next subject is do you approve the amendment to purchase and sale of the 104 Lowell Road Pulte Homes? Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to stand up here just because it's probably a bit easier for me to point to the, uh, to the map. Um, but uh, uh, effectively, this would be a modification to the purchase and sale agreement between the town and Pulte Homes for 104 Lowell Road. The modifications are as follows. First, uh, as was advertised in the bid package when we advertised for bids on the property, approximately one year ago, we'll be releasing this public wastewater easement for potential future wastewater uh, plant, uh, which is uh, no longer in the town's long-term plans, as we have discussions ongoing with the MWRA for sewer, and also uh, look to the town of Andover as a potential alternative for sewer in the northern part of town. So this would release this easement. Second, the town will maintain ownership of the easements for 100 Lowell Road, which is up here, 100 Lowell Road being the Edgewood property, and 102 Lowell Road, which is the undeveloped property that's uh, owned by the town fronting Lowell Road. They'll be slightly relocated, uh, this one for 102 Lowell Road, to allow for better layout on the property, but uh, we'll re receive the same uh, amount of space uh, to, uh, excuse me, we'll, we will receive space adequate to provide the minimum 20,000 gallons. We actually are estimating it to be closer to 25,000 gallons of wastewater uh, uh, leaching capacity to go along uh, with the 102 Lowell Road property when it's developed in the future. We also are looking to release an existing facilities easement along the westerly property of the, the Wilmington Town Line that goes all the way down to town-owned land here on the south side of the property. Um, that's something that's been requested and we do not foresee that there'll be a municipal need for that easement at this point given our long-term uh, wastewater and water plans. And uh, finally, um, a as uh, we go through some of the due diligence associated with the project, this would extend the due diligence period for the transaction to August 23rd of 2017. Thank you. Any discussion? On the board. I think it's yep. a reasonable approach. Yeah, it seems to make sense. I can understand why uh, Pulte Properties might not be interested in acquiring the easements. This particular judge doesn't do them any good, and I think it's in the town's best interest, and Pulte's and Edgewater's for the town to retain ownership of those. So I think it's a good idea. I think it's worth uh, accommodating them, certainly. And uh, what if we can do to facilitate the transaction? Let's get it done. Yeah, no, they were very reasonable for the discussion process. We've been meeting with them a lot. And especially with the parcel for the leaching field associated with 102 Low Road, I think us having control of it will certainly make it a lot easier for us to sell it. And they gave us a little bit more square footage than we initially had asked for, just so, just in case, so we can maybe do some expansion and potentially put a parking lot on top of it with some lighting and some areas for snow removal. So uh, they were very reasonable and accommodating to that request. So I want to thank them for that. 
I also want to state that I want to thank uh, Lincoln Properties and their representatives as well. They've been working with us uh, diligently to try to get this process, uh, keep the process moving forward. And uh, also Danielle McKnight and Michael Gilberto, both of you put a lot of work and time into this along with Holdy Home. So um, it's great. Uh, any other discussion before we take a... Yes. So just, just to, again, for the edification of the board members and the public, we're, we have uh, some draft language that we've received from Pulte Homes. We'll probably make some uh, adjustments to that between the two attorneys and then in the end. Uh, but, it, but it will be subs its substantive nature will be as described here. Um, there may be a slight adjustment to the size of that uh, lot for wastewater uh, the treatment for 102 Lowell Road. But again, it will be the, it, no less than the existing flow of 20,000 gallons per day on that site. Um, again, yeah, as the chairman indicated, I think everyone is working very cooperatively and, uh, in fact, uh, particularly in the case of Lincoln, going above and beyond trying to get this resolved. Okay. Mr. Masseri. I just want to you know I'm in full agreement with uh, what's being proposed here. It makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And I'll take a motion. We might have the amendment. I do have it. I'm supposed to pass it to you. Sorry, I did. It was fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve an amendment to the purchase and sales agreement dated March 9, 2017 for the sale of 104 Lowell Road in substantially the form submitted to the town by Holty, Holty Homes on July 24, 2017, and further to authorize the chairman to execute the final form of such amendment subject to approval as to form by town council, and further to extend the deadline for review period set forth in section 25B of said purchase and sales agreement to August 23, 2017 at 4 p.m. Second. Got a motion. I have it a second. Any dis more discussion? None being heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. Next one is the discussion of the strategic plan. Uh, last year when we had our meeting, we really spent a lot of time on the objectives, which was great, and setting the priorities in those objectives. But we never really got an opportunity to get through the SWOT analysis <coughs> and update it. And in the past few years, we've been meeting every year to update it, which is wonderful. But what I'd like to propose to the board is it has been a long time since we spent a little more time than just a couple, three hours on it. If we could dedicate a little bit more time, maybe even doing it on a, a weekend if uh, we have availability, or uh, if we're going to do it on an evening, but to allow three or four hours because... I think it's time for us to re review every page, go through all the SWAT again. You know, things have changed since we initially put that strategic plan together. We have a couple new board members, and I think we've got to go through every strength, weakness, opportunity, threat, and trend, because times have changed quite a bit since we put all those bullets on that. And I love the document. I think it's been a very helpful doc document for us to continue to be morning manage the board, especially where we continue to have change. Uh, with elected officials on the board. I think it's helpful to have it to keep us going forward. But if the majority of the board wants to just keep it to a minimum of a few hours and just update what we can, that's fine with me too. But I'd throw that out as for a discussion and just get the feedback from you all what you think. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Schultz. No, I think it's a good idea. I think, though, we might time-wise want to wait until after the Pulte Homes closing because I think that's going to impact on what we prioritize. Um, but I think it's a great It's always good to... Especially being a newer member, you can take my team with a lot of the issues. But okay, well, Mr. Masseri, one of the uh, things we, we created a workshop off-site to do it. I think the last time was the first time we didn't get really through the whole thing. Uh, I think that there's a there's a couple of issues associated with uh, timing too. Uh, I think I've discussed Budget. this when I was chair with Michael that. He would like to have us go through it prior to him releasing the budget recommendations to the department heads because then he's looking at, again, what the board's goals are for the year and other specific issues. So what might work, Mike, is to uh, start maybe do it in two sessions and start with what we didn't get done last year. Yeah, which was and the SWAT. And it may have an impact then on our goals and objectives. And if we can get that done, uh, you know, yeah. typically uh, the budget process starts a couple weeks after time, uh, October time meeting, correct, Mike? 
Yes, somewhere in that time frame. Mm -hmm. So if we could schedule it, I know what happens is Labor Day comes and then the crisis is getting ready for town meeting. And guess what? It's right. very early this year, which doesn't help. No. But uh, you know, if we could squeeze in a work session to deal with the latter half of uh, our strategic plan prior to October and then maybe right after October town meeting take the other piece of it that would fit in with mm -hmm. Michael then working and making a release of what the goals are for the budget process uh, for the department. Well, that's one of the reasons why I put on tonight's agenda because of the timeline associated with making sure it was completed by the time he was ready to release his budget information to his department head. Uh, and I that's a good idea. We could do that. We can continue to just try to do it as an evening session, focus on the SWAT piece since we didn't get to it last time, and then if we have to reschedule another evening, even if we have to do it in here for an hour or two. Um, well, we my feeling, that. Michael, is that if we go through the SWAT, right, and yep. we flag some things, they may have a genuine impact on, oh, absolutely. on our on, goals and yep. objectives. I agree. And Mr. You Schultz. Explain what SWAT is. I was just oh, say sorry. That. We, Strength, we know, weaknesses, yeah. threats, and trends. Yeah. Yeah. Strength, yeah. weaknesses, opportunities, opportunities trends threats, and trends. trends. Threat, threats, and trends. So. Um, but I don't think we have to wait till the close. I think we, we're on a path with that. We can make some assumptions as we're going through the strategic plan. Because the good thing about the strategic plan is it's a living document. And if something unforeseen happens, we can come back and readdress it. That's fair, yeah. So I'd like to propose that August 31st is a Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. um, it's a few weeks after our next board meeting. I'm not sure if it works in anybody. Well, last day of the month is really tough for my business. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That's why we plan the meeting on the 21st. So I'd like to try to do it before October town meeting. And maybe how about the first? We meet the first. We week meet of the fifth and the eighteenth. Yeah. So you want to try the week of the eleventh at some point? That would be meeting every week in the month of September, pretty much. So I was trying. Since we we're only meeting once in August, I was trying to squeeze one in there. Or punish us. <laughs> <laughs> the week before our meeting August. Is that too soon? Well, that we're meeting that week already. We're meeting the 21st. We're meeting the 5th, we'll be the 18th. Oh, what, are we talking August? He's talking about August. No, so. I mean, if we oh, met sorry. the week before our select meeting. Um, or is no, that we wouldn't have time between now and okay. then. Uh, I think with all the other stuff we have going on, I wouldn't want to put that. I really would like to allow the water to continue. I'd like us to stay focused on the poll. Well, you don't stuff. put it on the 31st if I'm a little late, I'm a little late. It's yeah. It's fine. If that's okay. So 7 o'clock? We would meet a little early and we'd have some food brought in. All right. Is it I won't be there. You won't be there then? Okay, no. then you're not going to be, we all have to be there. So yeah, what works I for you, Kate? I won't be there for that. That's why we did yeah. the meeting on the of 20, Monday the 11th 21st. of September. So the week of the 11th, Kate, does that work for you? Mm -hmm. Is there any particular night that's bad for anybody? The 14th. 14th, which is a Thursday. How about the 13th or the 12th? Tuesdays are not good for you. So Wednesdays. I have my other meetings on Tuesday, so. We could do it on the Monday, the 11th. Anybody object to doing that? Committee, you know, th a few hours. We'd probably start at, when do we typically start on when we meet over at the Hillview? I think we have dinner at 6.30 and start at 7. Yeah. Okay. So we can get three hours and that would be good. I think we can get a lot done in three hours. I'm sorry, so this is September 11th. 11th at 6.30. We'll make sure we uh, take a moment of silence out of respect for the day, and then we'll get get to work that day. Mr. Maseri, you have any objection? Mr. Gilberto? No, I'm fine. I if I works. did, I would have okay. raised my voice earlier. So let's plan for 6.30 on September 11th. That would be great, and I think we can 
That way there we can pull everything off and have it all ready for the budget cycle. Okay, thank you. That's at Hillview. Andrew. Mm -hmm. We do it downstairs. You know where that room is? What's next? Discuss the vote. Um, okay, the last meeting we did discuss quickly about deciding whether or not we wanted to take advantage of the new state law that allows a designee to sign the weekly warrant, or do we want to just leave it as it is? Anybody have any charges either way? Well, we left it as we were going to let people sleep on it and then finalize the decision oh. tonight. But it looked like we are trending towards leaving it the way it was. Oh, I know you kind of felt. It yeah, seems I, to be, you know, I guess since we've gone on to the electronic signature, which has been going on for several years now, there's been less and less issues. Yep. I only you brought it the up. finance director. Yeah, again, the only issues that tend to be around special warrants that need to be signed on, on short notice, yep. calls need to be made. And you have to call at least three members as opposed to one. Uh, I, I just think it, uh, and again, not that the opportunity won't still be there because we can have the finance director, you know, still forward the warrants to us and, you know, for those of us that like to take a look at it and see where the money's going and uh, check certain uh, line items in the budget uh, on a weekly weekly basis, that opportunity could still be there. But I just think it, uh, in signing it, some people feel as though they, they own it, so they want to look at it a little bit more closely, too. And that's not a bad thing. And I'm not just saying from the current board members, even future boards. Uh, it's not a bad exercise uh, for people to go through and if they so choose. Yep. I was neutral on the idea. I just wanted to yep. bring it up because it was a new law. We yeah, discuss it. I, I like it the way it is myself, so that's good. Let's move on then. I, I look at it, but it's already usually signed by the three of you. Yeah, but you can point. sign it anyway. Yeah, but if it only requires three, it's more for me to you know review the expenditures for the payroll. I, I think when you have five board members and you only need three signatures, well, right know, now it I'm deals not with people that are away. It, it, Generally, it works. I'm only Why signing the vendor one it? right now because my daughter's a summer hire, so I don't sign payroll. So one of you two have to sign it. They hooked me up on my phone. I'm good Until yeah. August. Until yeah. end of August. So. I was on vacation, and yeah. I didn't even look at my phone very often, but I was able to sign the uh, yeah. we appreciate it's habit. It. It's your okay. habit to do it. All right. It's more or less I checked my phone, and it pops up, and I said, oh, okay, yeah. let me take a look at this. Okay, we'll sign it. Mm -hmm. Let's discuss uh, approving the May and June legal bills then. Okay. Do you have a motion there? I have a motion. Do you have any discussion, Mr. Gilbert? Are you good? Uh, just I'll note that uh, it, after it kind of looked a little scary there for a little while during the fiscal year because of some of the expenses that we had, it looks like we're going to make it in terms of being within the budget for this fiscal year based on the Great. billing that's come in. We'll take a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for May and June 2017 in the amount of $7,977.35 as follows. Cobalt and Page, PC General, uh, $74.96.35. Cobalt and Page of Labor, $481 for a total of $7,977.35. Second. Michael, uh, a question? Yes. Uh, close out of the year. Yes. All right. When we get this bill, are we okay with the budget for? That's what he just said. Yeah. Legal? Yeah. For legal? I yes. That, yeah. So uh, there was a quite a bit of activity that generating and quite a bit of expense for a period of time there, and it didn't look like we were going to make the projection. But at this point, it appears that we will, we will hit, uh, we will be within the appropriation. Okay. And when does, uh, when does the year really close out? Right. I mean, is. And that relates to the free cash. Early August with a, a free cash number coming in in you know, early to mid-September usually. 
So there are no issues that we see at the moment? Uh, not, not at this time, no. no I, I would say that things see, appear to be closing out fairly well so far. Okay. Mr. Schultz, please. Oh, we just read the motion. Oh, sorry. Yep. Thank you got a second? Yep, yep. Apologize. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Is there a second? Motion? Town Administrator's report. Second. Is there a second motion? Or was that motion for both months? It was together. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Mr. Chairman, I do have quite a bit to provide in the Town Administrator's report, so bear with me. You have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. <laughs> to 9.30. I told, you, I told your wife I'd have you home <laughs> shortly after 9.30, and I want to honor that. So I'll just note, even though the summer has been much more forgiving in terms of rainfall this, uh, this year compared to last, that we do have seasonal water use restrictions in effect. I won't go over them now uh, as it continues to rain outside. But I ask the public to be mindful, particularly if we, particularly if we do uh, come across a dry spell in uh, August, uh, be mindful that we do have even odd watering uh, here in town uh, in the evenings and early mornings only. Check the website for more information. Secondly, the annual veterans dinner has been scheduled for Sunday, September 24th at the Hillview. There's information on the website and I attached a flyer to the report. Third, updated information relative to the new public records law as assembled by the town clerk is in the packet and I want to thank the town clerk for her efforts to make sure that this information circulated to all of our department heads. Fourth, we've been notified by FEMA that we will receive approximately $48,000 in reimbursement associated with the removal of snow from roofs and $3,000 associated with some work at Hillview from the winter of 2015. Yes, the winter of 2015. <laughs> we have also been told to expect approximately $181,000 in reimbursement for associated uh, snow plowing, uh, which will follow uh, shortly thereafter. So I know that that's been a long outstanding thing, and part of it has been because of the flexibility of the federal government and MEMA to visit and revisit what's eligible and what's not eligible with a number of cities and towns, including North Reading. But we're pleased to hear that that's being resolved now. Health Department again expects to work with Walmart for seasonal influenza vaccination clinics. They're also considering hosting a health fair um, for residents uh, in the fall. Um, we'll continue to keep the board and the community apprised as those plans unfold. And I want to thank Bob for his efforts with the Board of Health to keep that on the radar. Um, sixth, uh, I attached an update regarding road construction projects for the summer, which I will come to at the end of the discussion when I provide a brief update on capital projects. Seventh, uh, attached is the FY 2018 cherry sheet as provided by the state based on the governor's signing the budget two weeks ago. We did see an $800 decrease in library aid and approximately a $30,000 increase in state assessments. Uh, we'll be reviewing the information with the financial team at the next meeting. My understanding from the conversations with some of my counterparts in the other communities, uh, the increase in state assessments seems to be um, tied to uh, charter school uh, costs and it seems to be uh, dispersed widely amongst a number of cities and towns, not just North Reading. I, I attached a copy of the state auditor's recent report regarding firearm licensing in the state. I would just note that uh, North Reading is one of the most efficient police departments in the state when you look at the turnaround period, and that's through the efforts of the chief and his staff to ensure timely responses as required under the statute. Um, I want to note a couple of new employees who have been hired over the past month. Um, in no particular order, first we have a finance secretary, Kayla Gardner, who uh, just uh, started with us uh, two weeks ago. Second, uh, Diane Hansen, administrative assistant and account technician for the Department of Public Works. Uh, she started uh, also, uh, I believe, two weeks ago. Um, she took the position vacated by Jacqueline Studley, who became uh, the executive assistant for the department. So that'll be a, a significant help here in the town hall, having two full-time staff members over in the inspectional services office because they cover a variety of different functions. And finally, um, in consultation with the Hillview Commission, Karen Moberg has been hired for the position of administrative assistant for the Hillview Commission, and she started uh, the beginning of July. So I want to welcome those three uh, for joining the town here, and I want to thank the Human Resources Department and the various department heads and representatives of the Hillview Commission for participating in the interview process to select these candidates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, I have a couple of slides relative to the status of capital projects. Please. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest I put them in the, uh, the Dropbox folder separately, but I'll put them up on the screen briefly just sure. to note some of the major points, if you don't mind. So 
there's a lot of information here, and I, I won't expect you to digest it all, and it's kind of hard to read to be candid with you as well. But just some of the things that I will note that are ongoing, if you look here, this is for fiscal year 2015 and 2016's projects. Uh, most notably, the uh, sewer and water FEIRs. I think as everyone is aware, the work has been ongoing for the past 18 months on these two projects. Um, we are well along uh, the path with regard to the FEIR and the, uh, DE, uh, the, DE, the, FEIR, the FEIR for water, the FEIR for sewer. Some of that will be um, uh, potentially um, reflective of our discussions with the MWRA regarding the Cocker Street Corridor and potential other options for sewer that are looking more and more realistic for us now than they were when we started the initial, per uh, initial permitting. Um, probably the project that will have the most immediate impact on all of our residents, the meter project. As you know, we went for uh, an additional appropriation at the October town meeting. Um, the department is in the, in the midst of finalizing a product recommendation and will be meeting with a couple of folks who are outside the department, including Mr. Foti, um, to review that recommendation. And then once a determination is made by that group, we would then bid for installation and we are still targeting installation to begin in November for that project. And that's something I can't stress enough for our residents. Uh, at some point, uh, late this year, early next year, you'll they'll start seeing publicity from us, notices from us, and eventually be contacted by a contractor on behalf of the town to come in and switch their water meter as we go to a more modern uh, water meter uh, and water meter reading system. And just, my, yep. sorry, what do we do when you have a resident that will deny access? So uh, it, what they find is the, the bulk, 85 to 90 percent, uh, maybe even more, go fairly smoothly. There's a call, maybe a follow-up call, and the access to the house is granted. But the last handful that can take a number of months or longer, um, you know, w w what tools are available to us to compel somebody, I, I don't know that that, I, I, hope, I think we're hoping to avoid that type of a situation, but there will be, we know, a handful that will be, it will take some time for us to get in for whatever reason it might be going on. Thank and there's you. often underlying issues when we can't get in the house, to be honest with you. Okay, thank you. Um, so that's projects from 15 and 16. There were, uh, there were another uh, number of projects on here that were complete in the last update. I took them off. It's just a lot of information for us to be looking at. Um, I think we've made a, a, a lot of progress, particularly in the area of the buildings with Julie Spur Knight and the work she's done and uh, Andrew Lafferty and his uh, insights. For fiscal year 2017, which was approved uh, um, 14 months ago, um, some of the things to note, um, fire station improvements, they're ongoing. For those of you who are not aware, we've uh, finished the work on the administrative offices in the department and we're now working upstairs in the uh, day room and kitchen areas. Uh, so like when Prisco and I were over there, we saw the uh, facility, it's torn back to, well, I don't know that it's studs, but brick. Well, some studs. <laughs> and some studs. Um, so a lot of mold. So the, so it's, there is some remediation work that's going on and uh, the project is proceeding. Um, the windows for the building, will be doing the windows on the outside of it because they are past their useful life. Um, so that, that is something that will be taking place as well. They've been placed on order and uh, will be installed uh, later this construction season. Um, the October 2016, $50,000 uh, appropriation, that's been uh, completed. The June 2016 appropriation, which we had only the work in the town, clin t the town clerk's office to replace uh, those windows remains, and that's something that should be happening later this year. Um, skipping ahead, the uh, water, uh, water conservation devices. So this is actually changing fixtures in the town buildings to reduce the flow, uh, the consumption of water. It's something that we were advised to look at by the MWRA as we're looking to go and seek an interbasin transfer permit. Um, that's something that's going to be done in these, build, in these buildings that are scheduled to be started later this calendar year. Um, moving ahead, uh, our stormwater efforts do continue. We have an appropriation from last year and appropriation from this year as well. There was a bit of uncertainty with regard to what the implications were going to be based on the permit that was issued last year, scheduled to go into effect July 1st of this year. As I think the board's probably aware, in the middle of June, late June, we were notified that uh, partly through the efforts of the coalition that we've been a part of, the implementation has been stayed for a period of time. The work continues, but the requirement for compliance has been extended out, which is certainly something that will be helpful. Um, we had thought initially that because of some of the political discussions happening at the federal level, there may be a more dramatic change to the requirements, but thus far we've not seen that materialize, so we are continuing the work 
ahead on this appropriation as well as the fiscal year 18 appropriation that was approved by town meeting. Just uh, skipping down, there's a number of design efforts that are ongoing down here with regard to Reading. Um, the um, design is underway in all capacities. This has not yet started, but that's incorrect. We do have design work that's been uh, uh, um, on hand for us for the work to be done in North Reading, and we have submitted plans to the town of Reading for their response for the construction. Um, really, what's go what, what it will come down to is the permitting prior to us going out to bid, as we've identified, um, and that ties back, obviously, to the larger conversation that we're having about uh, water. Um, and then just moving ahead, a little bit of a preview of what's going to be upcoming in fiscal year 2018. The communications project, which is the uh, so-called microwave system, we had a pretty significant meeting with some of the stakeholders in public safety and IT two weeks ago. And uh, Selectman Prisco, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us at that meeting. Uh, it does appear that the, you know, the best option for us here in North Reading is a separate microwave system based on the approval of town meeting. When this note here uh, about the evaluation um, is referenced, uh, I, I'm referencing it just because we're aware of a parallel conversation relative to the INET that's taking place. The consensus seems to be at this point that the microwave is the right solution for security reasons, for reliability reasons, and for purposes of, uh, of a separate standalone system dedicated to public safety. That clearly was the message that we heard from the public safety departments a few weeks ago. Um, the library flat roof, that's a $45,000 project. We are creating the bid documents for that project, and I want to thank Julie for her efforts on that. Um, the town road, and I'll, when I come back to my place, it'll be the last thing I reference, which is the road construction plan for this year. Um, you see the uh, elementary wireless infrastructure upgrade. It was one that got quite a bit of discussion. That's actually been completed. Um, so that's moved fairly quickly in time for the uh, September um, opening of school. Um, the uh, computer and equipment replacement plan this year, the $35,000 of talking with the IT director will be uh, steering towards addressing our backup capabilities, which is something we've had a lot of discussion of here, looking to establish an offsite backup capability that's uh, more modern in line with the current IT standards. Um, just moving ahead, Engine 3, this is a long lead item for us where uh, the, the department's evaluation committee comes up with a scope. We generally purchase the vehicle off of a, a bid list that's created by MAPC in conjunction with the area fire chiefs. We don't expect that to be delivered uh, for, uh, um, until the middle or late part of next year. Uh, and there's a very thorough process that will be followed to, um, to address that. Um, some of the plumbing work that we're looking to do in the library and the police station will be done in the fall of this year. Um, and then, um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to know. The uh, asphalt hot box, that's something that's uh, was a kind of a, got a lot of attention during the capital project. We really believe that there, there may not be a significant amount of financial savings, but our hope is to be able to provide a better service patching potholes, particularly in the spring, <coughs> by having this equipment available to us. Um, so we fully expect to have it on hand for um, for the pothole, receipt, uh, pothole repair season um, early next Make year. Make sure they take the old one and trade. <laughs> if we can <laughs> convince them to. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's a hunk of iron sitting down there. And again, as I mentioned with regard down the bottom, the, the water project, that's the construction phase of the projects down there. The design is underway, um, scheduled to be bid after the permitting is complete in the late fall. So I hope that gives a little bit of a snapshot. Yeah. Just a quick question. Sure. The elevator at the library. Yes. We have that. Is that not on here? So we had work to to replace the controls on the elevator um, in uh, fiscal year 2017 town buildings oh. appropriation, if I remember correctly, and that that project was completed. And then we had a series of problems with the fire alarm, <coughs> triggering problems with the operation of the machine and, and shutting it down. And after. Again, there's been a number of things that have been changed, but the last, uh, uh, my understanding, the last issue to occur was to have some sort of component in the fire alarm system swapped out. And as I understand it, standing here today, it seemed to rectify the issue. We do have a vehicle uh, uh, equipment there in the elevator that, you know, will be soon approaching the end of its useful life, but it appears that the issues were more control related and um, ancillary system related than actually related to the equipment itself. Do we have a mower for Hillview too this year? So the mower for Hillview was actually accounted for in um, their operating budget, if I remember correctly, as a small capital project. Correct. And there, it was reviewed during the capital project right. process with Hillview, but funded, if I recall, uh, in their actual operating budget. 
So it's a lot of information I know. We'll try to do this update uh, you know, frequently along the way so you're not just seeing it under the context of the April hearing on the capital improvements. But uh, there's another, I can't stress enough, it's a lengthy list of projects and after town meeting the work only really begins and we're trying to keep them all moving at the, at the same pace to the extent we can and it takes a lot of work by a lot of people. I appreciate it. And we're grateful for the board support. <coughs> Finally, with regard to road construction, speaking with the town engineer, we're looking at paving and resurfacing projects for the, later this summer, early this fall, on the following roads. Sunset Avenue from North Street to Wagon Drive, which would be pavement reclamation. Similarly, Wagon Drive to Sunset Avenue, uh, Wagon Drive from Sunset Avenue to Wyoming Avenue, pavement reclamation. Finally, Wyoming Avenue to Wagon Drive, Wh Wyoming Avenue, from Wagon Drive to North Street, pavement reclamation. Those are three that are in the, in the same area. Uh, Wadsworth Road from Linwood a uh, Avenue to the end of the right of way would be a pavement overlay. And then uh, finally, Hancock Street, which has been done in conjunction with the development over there and a water line installation from Devons to Dick uh, Road would be for uh, reconstruction. The reconstruction has been ongoing in conjunction with the developer over there and it will be paved this season. Um, we've inspected the majority of drainage structures on those uh, uh, areas and reviewed the condition of the mains and the services that are there um, and it, it all appears that everything is uh, in line and uh, we're now working to schedule the baby. Michael, regarding painting of lines mm -hmm. like on 62 some of the areas are pretty worn off, is that a state <coughs> responsibility or? So with regard to Route 62, while it's a state numbered road, it is lo local jurisdiction. So my understanding is that that would be our, be our responsibility. Yes, I, I, I'm not um, not certain that there's a plan in the short term to uh, restripe Route 62. There was quite a bit of attention paid to Haverhill Street because unfortunately we didn't pave it until we weren't able to pave it until very late in the, in the calendar year, and therefore we weren't able to put the, the paint down until the uh, the spring. But we did finally get it down. Um, but I'll, I'll check with regard to. to the various sections of Route 62. And Route 28, that's done by the state. That's state jurisdiction, that yes. State, yeah. And just finally, a, a, a notation. Um, some folks, including the board, who received copies of a letter from uh, a resident uh, who was concerned with regard to uh, matters related to the Public Works Department. Um, I want to thank the resident for his patience, and I want to thank the Department of Public Works for responding to the concerns quickly to address the grading of the, uh, the road in question. So thank you to both parties. So has the road been graded? It was graded twice, yes. Okay. <coughs> After today's rain, maybe a third time. <laughs> Perhaps. Okay. Anything else? That's all. Thank you want you. to talk about National Night Out? Do you have any information on that uh, that you need us to know? Um, so National Night Out is um, next Tuesday um, uh, over at Ipswich River Park. I believe the start time is 4 o'clock, 4 to 7, or is it 5 to 8? I believe it's 5. That 5 to 8. Used to be six. It, 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 it gets five to eight. Is it five to eight? And we are supposed to be down there a little early to yes. set up and stuff at four. Yes. So if the board members want to participate, feel free to reach out to Amy or let me know. Um, I will be at the grill. What night is that again? It's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Which is. It's a great night. You get an opportunity, even if you don't, you can't work, but you have an opportunity to come down. Is there a rain date, Mike? Yes. Um, the following Tuesday? The following February? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anything uh, you're all set, Mr. Gilbert? Oh, I do have one other, yes. two other things. <coughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Way over it's my time. No, you're good. You're fine. Uh, first, um, residents probably saw in the newspaper last week and uh, have seen some of the signage around town, but North Reading uh, Little League will be hosting a um, state championship, uh, Little League championship on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this week. And uh, I note it first because it's a significant achievement for the Little League and for the Parks and Recreation Department to make quite an investment over in the uh, Benevento Field facility. But I also want residents to be aware that there will be additional traffic uh, around. There will be some um, uh, vehicles that need to be accommodated at off-site parking over at the um, at the Hillview, and there may be some impact on some side streets as well. The uh, police will be out. There'll be quite a bit of signage that'll be out popping up later this week to advise folks, but these will be guests coming from out of town who will need to be guided, and there's quite a planning effort that's gone into it. 
but I just note uh, for everyone uh, in town, just be aware that there will be an inflow of traffic and it will begin on Thursday afternoon. Um, yes, so I, I think I mentioned it, but uh, yeah. And then um, finally, again, another notice. Uh, there's been quite a bit of attention paid to Martin's Pond as we uh, follow up on the milfoil treatment. There's going to be another treatment uh, administered this coming Thursday. So I would just remind folks, uh, no swimming in the pond that day and do not use the water for any, uh, um, any vegetative purpose like uh, watering lawns or plants uh, uh, until further notice just because it could uh, have an adverse impact on, uh, on the, uh, the, the vegetation. And that, I believe, concludes my comments. Thank you. Nicely done. Thank you. Mr. O'Leary, would you like to hold a new business? Yeah, just uh, I, I was going to talk about the, uh, the Little League uh, hosting the, the finals. I mean, that, that's quite an achievement for North Reading Little League, and, and again, the improvements that have been made over to the Benevento field are, are terrific. Uh, we spent a lot, of, uh, a lot of years and a, a lot of days over there with, with uh, my two boys and, and coaching there. It was a, a wonderful experience, and it's a terrific program, and it really is quite an honor for North Reading to be able to host the, uh, the Williamsport uh, finals. In addition to that, I also want to mention that uh, North Reading Little League and Benevento Fields were able to host the Jimmy Fund Jamboree uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, and it, there was a feature on uh, ESPN during the Red Sox game, uh, which again uh, highlighted uh, the event, which was 16 teams from six area towns, over 400 kids uh, participating. and. Uh, Again, North Reading got a little bit of a splash there. They showed out a nice sign uh, you know, with Welcome to North Reading. And the, one of the teams that I helped coach, one of my boys in 2004, uh, state championships, 11-year-old team. But again, the Jimmy Fund um, teams that, that North Reading has been um, sponsoring over the years uh, really does a lot, of, a lot of good work and uh, does raise some money and uh, increase awareness for the kids as to uh, the need to, to participate in these programs. And, Again, I was a beneficiary of being able to, uh, to coach those teams over the years, and, and I just can't uh, reiterate enough how, uh, how great it is and what North Reading Little League uh, does do and has done in the past. And again, being able to host these events is quite an honor because uh, uh, we have a great complex there. And uh, if you are out and have nothing better to do uh, this coming weekend, you know, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they are, they are pretty good events. and it's. Uh, Good free baseball. So come out and participate and come out and watch. It's really good to enjoy it. And come down and see the field. Again, a lot of people don't have kids to play baseball or, you know, it's been years since they were down there. Uh, the field and the facility has changed. There's been a lot of investment made. And just come down and uh, reminisce and check it out. The snack Shack is still open. So, all right. But that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Messieri, would you, Ernie, hold a new business? Talk to me, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, I attended the uh, CAC meeting, Cable Advisory Committee yeah. meeting. Uh, they didn't have a quorum. Uh, our IT director was there. Uh, I played the bad guy with uh, Comcast. They were represented from Comcast. I've forgotten her name. And I was a better guy. What? I was, I was you were the better guy. guy. I was right. the better guy. I was not Steve was the better guy. He was the bad guy. I was less bad. Right. But the, you know, the, <laughs> there were two Russell. issues that I, uh, I took her to work on. One was the polls, which was a little bit of a dance around. I think what we need to get from Reading is a list of the polls and who's in the queue. Because there's, Comcast doesn't get a message to remove a wire until the person before them has done it. And I guess that's controlled by Reading Light. At least it's the impression she left me. And if we want to get something done, you know, and we're talking about revising and giving them a new contract, now's the time to put even more pressure on them. And the other thing, more even more important, is the uh, fiber network. And, uh, you know, I just told her that it was totally unreasonable that they take that away, you know, and uh, so on and so forth. And, you know, she said, no, it's got to go, and so on and so forth. But uh, she did leave with a little comment that, you know, after, you know, it's supposed to go at the end of the contract, but they'd probably give us a year. So it buys us a little more time to come up with the most effective solution. And, 
in my opinion, it's not microwave, and I don't think our IT director thinks microwave is the right thing for digital data transfer. But it's going to cost money, and it's got to be put into a capital plan, and we've got to sort out just what is the best solution for that. So I had uh, scheduled an IT meeting with Michael's help, uh, and then at three or four minutes before the meeting was going to start, I had to cancel my attending because of a customer server crisis that I got a call for I'm at five minutes of eight so uh, that hasn't been rescheduled and Michael was going to get back to me on that issue uh, I believe we had no we had the meeting I ended up attending in your absence oh good so uh, it was you know Man, I think at that meeting it was clear that the microwave was the way to go for at least the public safety piece. Yeah, I understood that. This yeah. fiber network, though, there is no way they'll let us take it over. Not yet. Not yet. See, part of it is still going because they're using it for the uh, cable. It's only going away for digital. You know, and I think uh, there's uh, why I wanted to have uh, a discussion with the IT director on that issue is to get clearly. We spent a lot of money on equipment to make the digital part of it work. And she's claiming, well, there's other equipment of theirs. And I think it's just a cable distribution box. box. Right. Yeah, the right. nodes. She, she, said the no, she said the nodes. Were yeah, use. right. Yeah, it's all it is. So, okay. we we got to stay on that issue. Thank you, though. And I, I knew you two would be the right people to work with them because we're – Getting a critical point where we get the contract negotiations coming up. Yeah, and then Verizon is only six months later, so. Right. Okay. Anything you know, else? The, uh, uh, the uh, cable advisory committee wanted to go from the four and a quarter percent to five, which I think is the limit. Uh, she was opposed to it. She was, she didn't, I, I don't think she really understood until she was told when the Verizon contract ended, I think she was thinking it's a long way off and that would give Verizon, you know, competitive advantage in terms of pricing, even though it's going to the town. Uh, I mean, it's going, it's going to the cable committee, uh, you know, the, uh, because I think both of them are at four and a quarter at this point. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an issue. If it goes to five, it gives uh, NORCAM uh, more money to deal with whatever they're going to deal with. Uh, but I stayed out of that issue. I was really more concerned about the things that were going to be major capital costs for the town. I don't know where the board stands on what kind of rate should be added to the cable bills of all our citizens associated with uh, that portion of the bill, which is well, currently... 4.25 percent I think we got to look at the finances of the existing cable network yeah I mean if they have plenty of funds then there's really no need to raise the yeah, they, they have accumulated a lot of funds as yeah. you and I <laughs> they got a lot of money and there's, there's this you know there's still the issue with the school department and the uh, yeah. video in the gym so. and the last thing is just a question to board members have you received an email that apparently looks like it's coming from Microsoft saying that your mailbox is getting full? Or am I the no. only one? No, sir. Okay. Well, if you do, it's coming from the town's email server. And uh, I guess they're set up with two gigabits of data. Yeah. And if your email is getting close to it, you're going to get a notice. And I've asked Michael to expand the... Uh, Email. Otherwise, you're going to have to start deleting it. Yeah. If you're doing it only on your phone, you can't get to it to delete. You really have to bring it down on Outlook or something. And yeah. you, you know, I wouldn't delete it. I'd archive it. But I would think the town record would want to be maintained with respect well, to the Well, I, I did ask that question last week. And no, regardless if you delete it, it doesn't get deleted. It's They capture it forever. I guess I end up. Well, they, they, that Probably. may be. They yeah. may be doing a backup or something that captures yeah, it forever. Bob, in regards to the polls, RMLD, I thought, provided us a spreadsheet that showed even the ones that North Reading was in the queue to start taking mm -hmm. off, right? And I, I have not seen that. So we, we received. Where did it end up? I have a document that I don't know. I'm not really sure what to do with it because it's 
it's got dozens of different columns in it, and it, it's not necessarily easily legible to tell what you're looking at. I'll put it in Dropbox, and the board members can look at it. Yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. I'll take a look at it. But I see. thought they pulled a summary for us. They, they do have a summary. Yeah, the, and I think that would be rules. helpful for Comcast to look at as well. You clearly see which ones Verizon's. We had some for North Reading, mm -hmm. and there clearly was. Right, some. So what Comcast said to me was, unlike some other companies, and I think they were referring to Verizon, right? When they get a request, when there's a poll to be serviced, they take care of it. They don't wait until they're all queued up and then hire a contractor to come into a whole bunch of them. That's the point she made, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't do anything until. I got a feeling that Verizon is next on the list. I don't know that for certain. So when we were doing this with, with the issues uh, associated with the polls for the new school project, mm -hmm. the town had to go first, I believe, and then Verizon, then Comcast, and then RMLD. Anyway, if we get the list, we but can they have the list. put they the heat on the appropriate yeah. uh, people and get it done. Okay. It's out, in my opinion, it's out of control right now. Well, let's hope we can get it back in the control. Anything else, Mr. Masseri? No. Andrew. Yeah, real quick, uh, I had a pleasure today uh, hanging out with the Reading, North Reading Chamber of Commerce. They had their annual golf outing, and it was great to see all the local small business owners, and I always encourage everybody to shop local and support the little guys. I think it's very important that we support our town's businesses, and it's great to see a lot of them out there today. You should know enough to get in out of the rain, too. I know. It was a little soggy out there. <laughs> the weather committee did a bad job, but the rest of the uh, event was great. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Um, just w make a note on um, regards to our North Reading Little League and the Diamond Club as well. They do a fantastic job, and the facility does look fantastic right now. But they are having this sec second annual North Reading Diamond Club golf tournament on August 11th. I want to make sure the public knows that, and it would be wonderful if you had the opportunity to come out that day. It's Friday, 8 a.m. tee off down at Hillview Country Club. It's a great cause. You can see the money's going to a great use when you look at the, all the fields in town, all the baseball fields, and the programs they run. So I hope the community comes out and supports that effort on Friday, August 11th, 8 a.m. Uh, other than that, I really don't have anything else. I think I'm good. Hey, Thank one you. more thing. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.